Hi everyone, Frybone here, back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. This week, we're going to take a look at an interesting exfiltration technique called data bouncing. If you've never heard of data bouncing, this is where you take data and you bounce it off of a legitimate source. In other words, you force that site or location to bounce the data to you or make some kind of resolution request to a DNS server or something that you control. And then once they do that, you take the requests and you reassemble them into a usable file. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do some data bouncing. We're going to do uh, both the red and the blue of some data bouncing. Now, this technique is nearly impossible to fully detect. So if you're a blue teamer and you think you're going to walk away today with a full detection of data bouncing, no, you're not. I'm going to detect the basics of the exact techniques I'm doing here, right? The exact technique we're going to do today is some PowerShell scripting, which this is cool. This is uh, some PowerShell scripts called Nightcrawler and Deadpool. And they were done by I am Jacoby. Shout out to you. Um, fairly simple PowerShell scripts. They just take the data and they shove it into ordered pairs and they make an HTTP request. They bounce it off and then they reassemble it on the other side. So Nightcrawler does the exfiltration and Deadpool does the reassembly. Now you could do the reassembly without Deadpool. You could do the reassembly with anything as long as you have the data and the keying. And we'll talk about that as well. So let's start. We're going to start with Interact SH client. Now this is the DNS server that we control, right? This is the HTTP server that we're going to control. This is our control method. This is what will receive the data bounce. Okay. So we're going to do interact sh client vo logs.txt. We're going to create logs.txt. And just before we start, I'm going to do a new tab in this folder. I'm going to go cd go bin. And I'm going to clear out the original logs.txt just to make sure that we know that we're not using old data. Right. So this does not exist right now. There's nothing in this folder. And over here, I am serving this folder with updoc. So we will pull this down after the fact and reassemble our log. So let's go ahead. We'll start our interact sh client. And you can see this one's done by Project Discovery. Pretty cool little tool. And it gives us an OAST URL. That's open application security testing, right? Um, it is basically something that is controlled by Project Discovery. They control these OS. Now, this is important for our detection later, but we're going to take this URL and we're going to put it into the syntax that we will use for Nightcrawler. So we're going to start with Nightcrawler. Now, you have to imagine you we're at exfil stage, right? You've got a shell, you've got command and control, you're at exfiltrating data stage. So in this case, we're going to come over here to win 10 host 2. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to just close this. We'll start from the beginning. First, as always, Defender fully on, right? We're going to exfiltrate this data. We're going to bounce it off of adobe.com, and then we're going to receive it. So imagine this is a very, very controlled network, right? You have command and control because, well, you got lucky or something like that, or you're using Cloudflare, which is almost always allowed, something like that. And we want to exfil this file, nuclear launch codes. Well, we can't go out to most sources. We can't go to Pastebin, can't go to OneDrive, can't go to any of the online storage locations. They've all been blocked. Well, so can we go to adobe.com? Yes, we can. So we're going to bounce this data off of adobe.com and then we're going to receive it from our bounce. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll just open a standard command prompt. All you have to be able to do is have standard command prompt and access to this file. You don't have to be a local administrator. You don't have to be anything here. So we're just going to invoke expression here, and we're going to download this straight from GitHub because GitHub is allowed. If it wasn't allowed, you could host it yourself. Wouldn't matter. As long as you can get this into the host, you're fine. And actually, I need to be in PowerShell. So we'll go PowerShell here. And then there we go. We're just going to invoke expression this down right from I am Jacoby's site on GitHub. And there we go. 
Defender is nowhere. If this was a problem, Defender would be letting you know right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Nightcrawler. So we now invoke Nightcrawler. We're going to give it an identifier of hello. That's what you'll see in the beginning. Then you're going to get the domain that we use. So I'm going to make sure that I'm using the right one. Go ahead and copy this in just to make sure it's correct. Back over here to Win10 host 2. We'll copy this in. Get to, well, that actually gave me some errors here. Probably need to get that out of there. So let's go ahead and we'll copy this in right here, just to make sure it's exactly correct. There we go. And the URL that we're using is adobe.com. Adobe.com is the one that's going to do the bouncing for us. And then we're going to upload super secret files, the nuclear launch codes. We're going to give it an encryption key. And the encryption key is you can't see me, I'm encrypted. Right? This simply chunks it up, runs through MD5 and AES. Right? It's not that hard to reassemble this. If you do it without encryption, they can simply reassemble the MD5. Right? It's, or it's hex. It's not hard to reassemble. But it doesn't matter. You're just trying to exfil a file. You just want it out. Can you get it out? Yes, you can get it out. It's almost guaranteed that you're going to get this out. So let's go ahead. We will enter this now. Once I enter this, I'm going to flip over to Kali, and you're going to start seeing the chunks come out. So it's running. But what matters is this is our bounce. We're getting requests query from adobe.com. So in this query is our data. And as you can see, we got seven of these. So if we come back over here to win 10 host two, we've now chunked out seven pieces, that's seven queries. So you need that to reassemble. Okay, at this point, the data is gone. There's nothing you can do. Let's go over here to Win10 Host 4. We'll reassemble it. Now, I've already done this once, but I am basically invoking... Uh, I did the same thing over here for Deadpool. So if I did an invoke expression for Deadpool, it looks much like this right here. Same thing I did on the other side. It's just Deadpool. And we're doing invoke Deadpool. And then we're going to do... We have our encryption key. You can't see me. I'm encrypted. We're going to download logs.txt. Let's make sure we download a fresh logs.txt here. And it's not there. So these are the logs that just came out from our Kali box. So if we open this now, you can see these are our logs. It looks just like our logs from InteractSH. So let's reassemble this. So we're taking in our logs.txt, we're giving it our identifier of hello, we're giving it our encryption key, and it's going to output our reconstructed file.txt. And it says reading log file, extracted seven chunks, sorted by the sequence number, the sequence number you will see in the logs, that's that zero, one through seven, decrypted the data, and put it in reconstructed file.txt. If we come back over here into our downloads, we now have reconstructed file.txt. This is our launch codes. If we come back over here to Win10 Host 2, and we open this file, there's our launch codes. So that is the red. This is devastating. For small exfiltration, I've never seen a technique that will be more successful. For the blue team, we'll start with the blue or the purple of this. For the blue team, when we start this, you're already behind the eight ball, okay? You are in forensics mode. What happened? So we're not going to be able to catch this live. Now you can, if you are super hopeful and you have like some, like a source system, you could look for the invoke expression, download cradle, and isolate that host immediately and maybe stop it. But it, that would have to be automated. There's no way humans going to do that, right? Because we got by Defender. Your EDR is not going to do that. You can hope EDR catches up at some point. 
But right now, as a blue teamer, we are behind the eight ball. We are just detecting what happened. We're in forensics mode. And I want you to think about that, okay? Not many utilities are like this, but there's no control out there that I'm aware of that can stop this as it stands right now. So how do we start our detection? Well, we know PowerShell was run. We know there was an invoke execution. So we can come over here and we can start for that. So we'll do event code 4104 and IEX or invoke execution. I'm just going to go like this. And we're going to look and see what happened. And this may take a little bit. I've been having a little trouble with this sim, but it should eventually load. And here we've got our time frame right there, count of records. We'll just knock this down to the four. And you can see right here, we have our Nightcrawler download. Okay, so we know Nightcrawler was downloaded. Go to GitHub, check out what Nightcrawler is. You know, come back to this video. Nightcrawler is an exfiltration script. Okay, how does it work? Well, you use the function invoke Nightcrawler, right? So we're going to do just that. We're going to look for invoke Nightcrawler. So let's do that. We'll do invoke night crawler and make sure you get your syntax right. So invoke night crawler. This is going to give us a very important piece of information and that is the encryption key or if encryption was used or not. So we can see right here, here is the command syntax that was launched because this is PowerShell and we have script block logging on. We can see invoke night crawler our identifier, we need this, hello, we need the domain, and we need the encryption key. You can't see me, I'm encrypted. So you have all that now, right? All this is going to give you is, hey, I can reverse engineer the file if I don't have it. If you're sitting in a sock somewhere and you're not at the keyboard or can't get to the keyboard of this particular user, you can start doing some things and piecing this back together. And that's what I'm showing you here. Basically some forensics at the SIM level. So, okay, we know the URL, we know the encryption key, we've noted these. We're now going to look for each one of the executions towards, or the HTTP requests towards the OAST site. So if we search star.os.star, we then can see that is the invoke execution. I need to make my timeline wider here because we shrunk it. So let's go to today. And here we go. We can see the pieces. Here is when I did this to GitHub earlier today is what you're seeing, not the Adobe one. There's 007, 006, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, you literally can take these and put them into a file and use Deadpool with the encryption key to get the data that was exfiltrated. Everything is in these, the data is here. So it's this piece right here between the URL and the code. Now I'll give you an example of this on 10 host four. I have put a file together called reconstruct. It is, uh, let's see, I don't have, I'm on recreated logs right here, recreated logs.txt. And this is the one that I did from GitHub earlier today. You can see these are the chunks, 0, 01 through 0, 07. I'm going to save this. And then what we do is because we have reconstructed file.txt here, we can use Deadpool to reconstruct it from what we took from the sim, right? This is forensics though. You're just learning what happened. This data is gone. So now what we'll do is instead of using logs.txt, let's go back here and we'll go home. And then we're going to do reconstructed file here. So reconstructed file.txt. Uh, that it's actually recreated logs, not reconstructed file. Recreated logs.
Let me get the actual name. Just make sure I don't mess this up. Recreated logs. Because we're loading this into Deadpool. Did it not take? Of course. Rename. Copy the whole thing. Recreated logs.txt. And then our identifier, which we found. Our encryption key. You can't see me. I'm, a, I'm encrypted. And then we're going to go out file and we're going to call it reconstructed file 2.txt. And then we reconstructed the file and notice that worked. That gives us everything from basically what we took from SIM and pasted in from our recreated logs right here. Okay. So you can recreate what was done in the exfiltration. Now, this requires something. Okay. The logs we got are Sysmon. They're Sysmon 22. These are the logs coming from the host or you need either full packet capture at the edge of your network or something that is logging every dns request that's not easy and many orgs don't have that at all okay so just make sure that you have something like that in your environment okay that is the red and the blue of data bouncing now the blue team side of this is scary Red team side is like, woo, awesome. Blue team, this is a bit scary. I don't know of any controls that will handle this. We were at forensics for doing anything. Uh, the data is gone. Now, that's pretty typical for the exfil stage. If you've let it get the attack get all the way to the exfiltration stage, you're already pretty owned. But just realize exfiltration is a lot easier to do with some of these modern things like this. You're not always going to stop the adversary. So do your best to stop them before they ever get to that phase. All right. That's it for this week's edition of the Weekly Purple Team. I'll keep going with our contest. Please like and subscribe and hack the planet to defend better. Thank you.